Hello and welcome to the case for coaching. We have a fast 30 minutes to cover this information and uh, many of you submitted questions ahead of time. Now some of them are outside the scope of what we've got for today. So here's what I want to share with you. At the end, I've got something for you. It's basically a gift of time. So you can make sure that you schedule time and we'll get your questions answered one-on-one. -on -one. And I am happy also to stay on at the end for those of you who do have additional questions. Uh, the way we're going to handle questions is there is a panel in your uh, an area in your control panel where you can type in questions. Please do use that. I will monitor that throughout. Uh, and some of you have asked already, will you have access to this information again later? And so I'll share with you what we do when you register for one of the free webinars is two things. Number one, we load it on our YouTube channel. So all of our past videos are there. Uh, in addition to that, for everyone who registers, we will actually send you a direct link to the recording uh, after the program is over. Uh, and I did uh, have a couple of you asking those, so hopefully that's addressing what you wanted to know. All right, so let's get going. Our agenda for the conversation today. We're going to have a definition of coaching, and we will talk about the significance of coaching. We're going to move in discussing the ROI. First off, we'll talk about quantitative versus qualitative as far as measuring coaching, and then we'll give you some examples of what the research shows. And Please note, there is so much research out there. I'm going to give you a few things and, of course, recommend that you continue pursuing the information that's available. Uh, we will provide some tips for being effective with your coaching. We will walk through the Center for Coaching Certification coaching model, and I'm also going to take you through a diagram for the process of coaching. Uh, we will discuss opportunities for coaching programs in organizations. We'll talk about resources and then question and answer time. So the definition of coaching that we're looking at here comes from National Coach Federation. And I love this definition. I get so excited about it because of the wording. So focus in on a couple of things. First off, the word partnering. You see, a coach comes in as a partner. That's very different than being the expert hired for what you know. Then it goes on to say we inspire them to maximize their personal and professional potential. So it's them doing it, uh, their choices, their decisions, their actions. And that's powerful because when people make their own choices, figure out their own answers and plans, that's where they get successful. And bottom line, that is the reason that coaching ROI is so incredibly high. When you think about all of the experts that are out there, they're, they're brilliant people. We want them. They provide a ton of value. When you think about the difference in the ROI, the reason coaching ROI is so high is because the individual client is the one who figures out their answer and how they're going to do it. That plays out in the dynamics that we see, for example, in the workplace. Many of you have seen these numbers with us before. Uh, they're very profound when you think about what it's saying to us. So you've heard about the Gallup poll where the number one reason people quit their job is because of their boss. In 2011, Business News published that 84% of workers wanted to quit their job. And if you remember, 2011 was a down economy. The only reason they couldn't quit is because they couldn't afford to. The fact that they wanted to quit, what does that tell you? So the workplace today is where the dynamic is really impacting people. And so when you have a boss or a supervisor or management that is less aware of coaching as a skill for themselves, uh, then you get this kind of impact. Coaching itself 
is going to engage people and it's going to increase productivity. Gallup also did 199 different surveys, uh, different questions, etc., on employee engagement. And ultimately, here's what they find. Business units in the top half on employee engagement scales double their odds of delivering high performance. Companies in the top 10% on employee engagement best at their competition by 72% in earnings per share. That's phenomenal. So this is showing us that when we have a tool, a process, a way of interacting that engages people, the results for the organization, for the company, increase. It's also a way of measuring what we call qualitative skills and interactions, etc. Because qualitative measurement is specifically more about descriptions. So people are explaining things, they're giving feedback. Qualitative ROI is stories. And it's with those stories, you're, you're getting examples. It's people stories about the interaction and the reasons people engage and are motivated. And it's also evaluative. So it has an element of measuring opinion, uh, personal thought, etc. So generally speaking, uh, we say, oh, it's hard to measure these qualitative things. And at the same time, they often have the greatest impact in terms of results. So the statistics you just saw where that top 10% score on employee engagement means a 72% higher that's a way of measuring a qualitative impact. Now, quantitative measures that you'll see on coaching ROI are very specific to numbers. So ultimately, when companies invest a lot of money in something, they want to know, hey, is this paying us back? Are we getting the bottom line impact that we're looking for? Because it is a huge investment. So what that means is they're looking from the baseline, the before coaching, to the outcome after coaching. Where are we at now? That's our baseline. And where are we at as a result of the coaching? That's how we know what the difference is. It's very definitive. It's a very clear measurement uh, because it's pure numbers. Okay. So now let's dive into some of the research. And of course, the challenge is, is it quantitative? Is it qualitative? What you will find when you look at these studies is they do look at both qualitative and quantitative numbers. When they're talking qualitative, they define how they measure it. They attach certain dollar values. They look at scores or ratings, et cetera. So there are measurements for, for both. And it's really digging into the research studies that's going to show you that. Now, two studies are most commonly cited in the coaching space. One was done by Manchester Inc. And they cite a 570% return on investment. That's incredible. And then you've got Metrics Global citing 529%. Okay, when you look at those numbers, it's like, okay, wait a minute. For every dollar a company spends, they're going to get $529 back. How can you afford not to have a coach? I mean, it's phenomenal, the impact of what it has. Now, I love this next study, and here's the reason. It's pure numbers. So Triad Performance Technologies looked at coaching with regional and district sales managers in a telecom organization. So they're looking at numbers, <laughs> and they found a 10 to 1, a 1,000% return on investment. Wow. A thousand percent return on investment. How can we afford not to have a coach? So when you think about making the case for coaching, looking at some of these research studies, pulling the name of the study, the numbers, et cetera, and really understanding what it's telling you, it's fabulous, uh, both on a personal level and in an organization. Now, this particular study went on to say, top performing staff were retained. In other words, it cut back their turnover. 
Uh, they created a positive work environment. They improved customer satisfaction ratings. And ultimately, bottom line, those revenues were increased. That's what they cared about. Now, another study, and this goes back to harder to measure, more on the qualitative side, looked at productivity. Well, you can measure productivity. Uh, they have metrics available for that. So they said when a company invests in training, they get a 22% improvement in productivity. When they combine training plus coaching, they get an 88% improvement. Okay, wow, again, think about the impact. So productivity improved by four times the amount when you add coaching. That's phenomenal. And it's a great way to be making your case. Uh, right management says 86% of companies use coaching to sharpen the skills of individuals targeted as future leaders. Now, here's another one that I love. This one is great. So Fortune magazine looked at a number of the different research studies that are available. So Metrics Global, Manchester Inc., and there are quite a few others as well. And they said the average return was six times, 600%. So phenomenal numbers. The research studies are there. It does take some looking on the internet. And of course, uh, the International Coach Federation is going to be a great resource for this as well. Uh, so checking that out. Now, I've got another one. These are all talking to companies. Here's one on a personal level. So Amoco Corporation, part of British Petroleum, did an evaluation of coaching over a 10-year period. That's a long time, so I love this study. And they looked at what it did for individuals who participated in that coaching. And it says they consistently demonstrated improved performance which in turn leads to the next one. They increased their ratings of potential for advancement and it had a 50% higher average salary increases. And the participants themselves attributed this to coaching. That's exciting. So for those of you who are targeting individuals, this is an example of an ROI study that's awesome. All right. Let's dig into how are you going to be effective as a coach. So, of course, as with any profession out there, you want training specific to that profession. You want process expertise as a coach. And you want to, of course, be in keeping with the code of ethics. So the International Coach Federation publishes 11 core competencies for coaches. You're going to hear about these, learn about these, and start developing these during coach training. And then as you have experience as a coach, you will further expand your skill set with these. They're sorted into four different category areas. The first category for competencies is setting the foundation, and it includes meeting ethical guidelines and professional standards. There you have it, our code of ethics, and then also establishing your coaching agreement. So you talk with people about coaching and what this is about, and you sign an agreement with them. Then it moves into co-creating the relationship. And I love that they say it that way. It isn't a one-way event here. We really are partners working together. And co-creating the relationship means establishing trust and intimacy. Because ultimately, the number one indicator of success for coaching is the rapport between the coach and the client. That means the client really trusts you, and because of that, they are able to have that open conversation, referred to here, that intimacy, where they'll really share. And that gives them the opportunity to be clear in their own thinking and make their own decisions. In keeping with this is coaching presence. And what that really means is that we are completely focused on the client on really being in the moment with them. 
Then you've got your communication competencies. Communicating effectively is the category. One of the competencies is active listening. Totally makes sense because really hearing both what they say and what they don't say and feeding it back to them helps the clarity of it. It also sets up the powerful questioning that we do as coaches. And of course, it's so important to have that clear, direct communication. Our fourth category of competency is facilitating learning and results, which involves creating awareness. And we do that because when the client trusts us and they're open with us, it means we can ask those powerful questions. We can really challenge and expand their thinking. And that is going to create awareness. Then we partner with them so that they're designing their actions. We're planning and goal setting throughout the coaching relationship in terms of how we're working and, of course, the client developing their strategies. And as a coach, we're an accountability partner. That means we're acknowledging progress, celebrating those successes, and also keeping them on track with their follow-through. Now, all of this feeds directly into the coaching model. So the analogy here is the staircase. A coaching relationship is a staircase to success. When you go to build the staircase, the very first thing you do is put your framework in place, our snazzy green triangle there. And that framework in terms of a coaching relationship starts with training. Again, just like with any profession, learning the profession. Because it's different. It's funny. Every once in a while, people say, well, I have this background in this area or that area. And it's very related. They have a ton of transferable skills. Well, let me throw this out. If I'm a dentist, I'm a doctor. Does that mean you want me doing your annual physical? Well, no, of course not. It's a very different kind of doctor, right? So it's the same for coaching. Training in the process and then in turn developing the competency, the 11 competencies we discussed. And of course, part of this is also that code of ethics, because in the training, you go through that code of ethics. It is different in coaching than what it is in other professions. Some very significant differences. So it's so incredibly important to do that. Now, the relationship itself then starts with the agreement. That's our first step. And we put that in place on our staircase, and it leads to the next step of understanding, understanding who the client is, how they think, process, and function, their priorities, their influencing factors, et cetera. That, in turn, supports the step of rapport, where the client really does trust, and you have that open communication. The next step, where you're asking those powerful questions, questions, the listening, the clear, direct language, and that in turn supports the step of exploration, where the client is considering different possibilities, exploring other avenues, etc. And as a result of that, they develop their strategy for how they are moving forward to accomplish what they want. And that in turn leads them to their doorway, the success being defined by them. Now, the process itself for the coaching relationship starts with a free introductory session, usually 20 to 30 minutes. This is an important part of the process because this is where the client is exploring, hey, is this the right coach for me? And the coach is exploring, hey, am I the right coach for this person? Are we going to work well together? It's a chance for the client to have a sense of how you function. Do this even if you're an internal coach working inside of a company, because you want the client involved in selecting your co- their coach, and you also want the client involved in saying, yeah, this coach does work for me. I, I have a sense of how the relationship and the process functions. So very, very significant. Now, once you've done that session, you're deciding, okay, are we engaging in the coaching relationship? And if the answer is yes, you move into an opening session. It's a powerful, big picture exploration of what the client wants in all different areas. This is important because they do have competing priorities, and it's important to have that understanding. 
how are how are you going to support the client maintaining their focus and being fully engaged in moving forward and providing in our class we give you a tool for that then on an ongoing basis during the coaching conversation, the client prioritizes what they want to work on. They're developing their strategies and action plans. And then the coach is, of course, acknowledging success and checking in with them on the follow through. As the coaching relationship is complete, and by the way, most last 12 months, uh, what that means is the client has accomplished what they can in this relationship. And they're ready to graduate or move on. It's very exciting. As a coach, we make sure we're setting them up for the long term. And in the closing session, we're reviewing what was their ROI out of this coaching relationship. And, of course, also letting them know, hey, we're here when it's going to be helpful to them to come back for more. So if you want to get started, Think about a coaching program in an organization. What's it going to take? First off, it takes creating buy-in. What is this and how does it work? Then you get started. You get feedback. And, of course, you also want to be defining specific action steps. So let's walk through this in a little more detail. When you want to create buy-in, go back to the research we shared, the studies on the return on investment for coaching. You want buy-in at the beginning from the very top levels, your upper management, because it is going to trickle down and spread and people follow their lead. That spreads out to the middle management and ultimately you really want to create buy-in with everyone in the organization. With that buy-in in place, now you're ready. Okay. I Let's get this coaching program going. So you're going to plan what you're doing. You're going to be organized in how you're doing it. And you're going to implement your program. So what does that take? Your plan. Who's going to manage the program? How are they going to manage it? Who's going to be a coach? What training are they going to have to be a coach? And then how do you pick a coach? Who's going to be coach? In other words, what's the process for them qualifying to have a coach and for matching that? what resources are available both for coaches and for clients. And then in terms of organizing, think about having a program manual, whether you do it electronically or, or on paper. It's going to overview coaching and the program itself. You'll have forms available to people. You'll establish the policies as an organization. And then, of course, include that code of ethics. So significant. When you're ready to go, you want to announce your coaching program, partner with everybody in the organization, provide the support to both coaches and clients, and of course, evaluate what's happening. Take the opportunity to get feedback so you keep informed with people involved. You track and compile the results. You communicate those results throughout the organization, and of course, adjust appropriately. Okay, so let's take a moment for you. We do this as coaches with our clients. Uh, you do this when you have a coaching program. What are your action steps? To grab a pen and paper, open up a document on your computer. First question, of course, is what stage of the process are you at? So knowing where you're at helps you look at, okay, what's next for you? And you define that. What is next? What are the challenges you're facing? What are the resources you have available? And then what are your action steps? Take time to really dig into this. I know I'm going through it fast right now. Ideally, you're capturing these questions and you'll come back and build on them and add more. In terms of resources available to you, first off, I've got to say the internet, it's so great to go on and simply do a Google search or Bing or whatever you use and you say ROI of coaching. What's out there? There are a number of organizations that are available as resources, so of course we'll share some information on that, uh, different articles and publications, and people. So one example of an organization that's a resource for you is the Coach Federation. Their website is coachfederation.org. They have a ton of information, all kinds of research and resources, etc. 
definitely worth checking out. The Center for Coaching Certification, we do want to be a resource for you in terms of training. And then the Center for Coaching Solutions, uh, where we are an opportunity in terms of accessing resources, whatever you want for that coaching. The articles and publications, a couple of things we'll share with you. We do have a blog, new posts every uh, couple times a week. We publish a book once a year, and these are great books. Uh, number six just came out last month. There's a lot of incredible content because the chapters are written by graduates of the program, and they are so incredibly smart. Uh, it's so fun to do this and to tap that expertise. And then, of course, these free webinars we do each month. In terms of people, we're available to you as a quick check. Hey, if you want to ask a question, whatever it is. And then also for outsourcing, if you want support for developing or running a coaching program, for training coaches, or if you want coaches. Uh, so in terms of a quick chat, feel free to call or send an email. I am happy to be available to you uh, in terms of outsourcing for coaching programs, whatever stage you're at. We are here to partner with you on that and support that process for your organization, uh, provide the training, uh, whether you're being, learning to be a coach yourself, moving it towards that ICF membership or a credential. So we have beginning levels all the way through. And then, of course, providing coaches. Now, what's the next step for you? See, we're running out of time already. So first off, I mentioned at the beginning some of you had questions that were outside the scope of what we had, and I wanted to make sure I give you time. So here's what I'm going to do. Those of you that are here, I'm going to offer you a free 30 minutes. How do you access that? Well, after I get this recording loaded on the YouTube channel, I'll send you a direct link to it. If you reply to that email and say, yeah, I want 30 minutes, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to send you a link to my calendar. You can access my calendar online, pick a day and a time that works for you, and you've got your 30 minutes. So you can book it yourself directly. Next step for you. Choose your resources. There's so much available. What are you tapping? Be intentional. Plan your process. Implement your strategy and achieve your results, your doorway called success. So I do want to make sure to open it up for additional questions and answers. As I mentioned, some of you submitted those ahead of time. So I want to make sure that I'm available for that as well. Uh, and address that. So please, in the question panel, ask what you want to ask, um, and I'm getting the thank you. So thank you as well. So glad, and it's, by the way, for me, it's so fun, because many of you are familiar names, uh, so I definitely appreciate seeing you here. Uh, we do have some new ones, so I thank you as well. So great, great. Uh, all right, uh, questions. Um, I'm getting lots, lots of really good comments. Uh, I feel like I've therefore answered uh, what you've submitted ahead of time. Hopefully that is the case for you. And of course, uh, what we do want to do is be available. So watch for that email with the link to the recording. Um, so that's coming to you. Uh, I do realize we've used our 30 minutes. Uh, so I appreciate your time. We'll get the recording out to you. I'll look for an opportunity to connect with you again. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time and your participation. And make it a great one. Have a fabulous weekend.